Alright guys, welcome back, welcome to Free to Play Jewels, my name is Jace, and we are going to open some packs. Uh, I was trying to force the elf deck earlier, and uh, sort of got, my design went from its initial stage of being like mid-range, that even had six drops in it, you know, and had value cards that weren't elves, to this Abzan build that was just small dudes, and just did nothing like i mean somebody bailed on us on turn three i think that was the best victory we had but like just not good enough um so yeah we're gonna open this um i really want to add liliana to my john deck i think it would make a, like a significant difference so we're gonna open these on that, like until we get liliana and then i might go back and finish shadows we have 1300 gold's worth of shadows to get through but I'm also kind of tempted to start opening Kaladesh because I think these packs will go on offer once we get nearer to like uh, Amon Cat or whatever it's called. So anyway, let's open some cards. Huh. We started with the Mythic. We got Decimator of Provinces. The so ten generic mana for a seven-seven creature Eldrazi board. Mythic. Merge cost 6 green green. Green? <laughs> uh, you may cast this spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the emerge cost reduced by that creature's convert. So you can get this out turn 5, turn 6 maybe. Actually, can you do it turn 5? When you cast Decimator of Provinces, creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2 and gain trample until end of turn, which is very, very powerful. And it itself is trampling haste. It's seven seven body, which does a lot of damage. Very cool. But scar the laboratory for isn't scar the laboratory it's four instead of six. Four mana. Draw three cards. If you have delirium, is decent. This I don't think I'm gonna play. That. These are all really, like, this card actually is kind of interesting. These things are terrible. It's not going to That's a very cool card as well. I really like this one. Um, Stand in Mind Mender. I don't like cards that are a bummer, generally. And this card is definitely a bummer. And I still like it. So, like, I want to play black decks. Like, I'm a stupid teenager still. I'm 30, but I'm a teenager. You know, I want I want black stuff that looks cool, demonic, and whatever. This guy looks amazing, and he is black, in theory. And the, the action it has is a significant bummer, so I sort of don't love it. But I still think it's cool. So it's eight generic for creature Eldrazi insect rare emerge five black black and cast it you get to exile uh an online card with converted mana costs three less and a card because you can't have lands uh with converted mana cost four greater. Um and they discard them. Oh they don't actually exile them? Uh that's not quite as good still. Yeah, really cool. Uh, like it, this might even be like if we had sideboards in jewels, this would be a sideboard card for the Jun deck, and you would emerge onto like a reclamation sage, bring them out of the board against control decks. That'd be cool. Liliana's elite, two and a black for one one creature zombie gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. We just don't have that many ways to mill ourselves in jewels efficiently. We don't. We obviously don't have dredge, but it's kind of cool. I mean, you could play a deck with Colossus in this. Uh, I've seen zombie decks for real in jewels, and play like one of the floorboards and rise in the tides, and it's like. Successful zombie strategies in almost every format that I've seen tend to be token-based. 
that I don't like. I want I want to play my grave crawler and I want to play my uh, Gerald's messenger. I don't want to make a bunch of tokens, but unfortunately, I think it's pretty effective to make a bunch of tokens. Fury Blade Vampire one in red for a one-two creature vampire berserker with trample, and at the beginning of combat on your turn. So that's quite specific. This uh, um, requirement. Uh, you may discard a card, and if you do, it becomes a 4-2, which is aggressive, like, and is quite powerful when used with the other very efficient, aggressive vampires like Arid of Falconrath. Um, seen people using the 2-1 flyer, we saw one earlier if you watched the video. Um, Draven Fly of Bloods is 2 and a black for a 3-2 with Delirium, gets plus, plus 1, so it's a 4-3. Which is pretty good, but I just... I don't think there's any deck in Duels that wants it or plays it. I don't think I've seen it played by anyone but the computer. Genius Scab, 2 and a blue is a great card. 2-3, creature zombie horror with prius and you can buff it, well, pseudo buff it. So at its biggest, without prius, this thing is 4-1. So it's a 4-1 and then you could prius it. You you could do crazy stuff with this. You could use, like, it just goes with all those other Bryce creatures, like the, the Abbot and the Mage and um, even the Bully, Bully, Dream Bully, kind of. You know, all of those cards all go together, and you just put, like, double strike spells, like Kid's Fury and some huge buff spell, and just go off. So, kind of cool card to have. Actually, Desperate Sentry is really cool. It's not likely you're playing White Emerge is the issue. Um, cool and efficient card, nonetheless. The kind of card you use Pauper for your Emerge stuff if you wanted, although like, that deck is pretty bad. I saw Jake just playing it. I don't know how long ago. Maybe, maybe it was even Seth. I can't remember. Dark Salvation, XX, Black, for Sorcery, Rare, uh, target player puts X, 2-2 two, two Black Zombie Creature tokens onto the battlefield, then up to one target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each zombie. That player controls, wildly difficult to understand for, I guess, I mean, I was going to say for no reason, but clearly, the guys who template it, they know what they're doing, but... My friend got this, he got jewels, and it turns out it runs really terribly on his machine, which is a shame. He's running basically the exact same hardware I am. Um, and he got this card, and I, I went, right, this is a perfect test. Tell me what this card does. He struggled. Like, he got it, but it took time. So, basically, you make a bunch of zombie tokens, and then a target creature gets minus one, minus one, equal to the number of your zombies. It doesn't really reflect that, but yeah, if you have 10 zombies, you can give something minus 10, minus 10, but more likely, you know, given something minus two, minus two, minus three, minus three, but it's still a kill spell that's, you know, can get quite big. Um, I do like it, but it is XX, so therefore, like you are making dudes. That's That's the other point. And you can just cast it if you already have dudes without a big X cost because the minus one, minus one amount is not dependent on X cost, it's just dependent on presence zombie wise. Speaking of which, advanced stitchwing, three blue, blue, three for zombie horror with flying. Um, and for two and a blue, we can discard two cards and return it uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So being able to return to the battlefield and not quite good even though it does come in tapped um two and a blue is respectable um not terrible at three blue blue for a three four but the double blue is an issue and it's just very expensive to be played in duels the format is sort of fast enough that you either play this flat out ramp ulamog kozilek deck or you play everything else that is sort of low mid to aggro range um there are there are these very big control decks and they're very low mid and aggro decks there isn't that sort of high mid range so 
I don't know. I just think it's not there. I, I don't see it being played because if you want this effect, you'd play Haunt, Haunted Dead. Seen this? Seen this? I mean, I haven't seen this, but this is not. Um, Lab Brute. I was complaining about ways to mill yourself. This is a way to mill yourself, but it's not. Slayer. I'm trying to think what. Yeah, there are probably some good. Oh, it's an aura just. Yeah, there are probably still some good auras you can get back. I mean, obviously we can get back dead with and stuff. There might be there might be a deck somewhere in jewels that could use that. Is that <laughs> Nimbus Wings is actually very good. Like in the human deck, Nimbus Wings. If you're just starting out in jewels, like make, making White Weenie. Uh, with a blue splash to play like the river guard dude and a couple of other flyers and then you just play these white weenie dudes and nimbus swings and you your early game is tiny dudes mid game is make those dudes flying and your late game is more flyers um but nimbus swings is really effective now the two for one issue is real but often if you do it on your free blade let's say on turn uh, three, and attack in, becomes a five, I think, four or five, flying, vigilance, fucking angel, effectively, so it's kind of cool, but, you know, you do get blown out, uh, but in that kind of deck, you know, you're sort of, depending on them not having it, as it were, uh, Elder Deep Fiend, amazing, best emerge card, probably, certainly the most played one, uh, it's generic mana for a creature, Eldrazi Octopus, at rare. Uh, it's 5-6 with flash. You can emerge it for 7. It's blue, though. Um, and when you cast it, tap up to 4 target parts. That is it. That is a bummer card. That is a total bummer. You get this cast against you. Often, it's like your opponent time walked you. You just just don't get a turn they get the smash so yeah really 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 powerful card i don't know i haven't seen these cards in jewels like they've existed for long enough that i should have played against these decks more and i don't think many people are playing them that much so it'll be interesting to see how these work out i'm a captain I've seen this before one two two and it attacks or blocks. So not terrible. Humans get. I don't see it being good enough in our format. It certainly wasn't good enough in others. Uh, well, maybe in Super Bowl. Right down. Uh, this is a possibility as uh, the. I don't know if I've seen them play it though. I mean, maybe maybe it gets into the white red vehicles kind of deck. Maybe. Uh, grapple's kind of cool. I think grapple works for us. Um, I think gradually as we get more cards, the Jun deck's probably going to mature into like a more Ethereum side strategy kind of deck. Sorry, Kings. I'm just seeing your comment now. You get the cheat, you have money easily. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, oh, what is the Konami code? Up, down, left, right, L1, R1. I can't remember. Left, start. This. Yeah, just do that. Get you all the gold. Just buy cards, man. I haven't been grinding. No, not at all. Uh, so yeah, Grapple won the green for an instant. That's cool. Uh, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. You may return a creature or a land card from your graveyard. So the fact that it's three is the reason that I don't play this yet in my uh, Pauper Dredge deck, but I think it's good enough. I think, like, I was cutting the backup Grizzly Salvage. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and this... I, I was like, no, I can't put this in because it, draw, it throws less cards in the bin. Like, whatever that card's called, same as Grizzly Salvage, gets five cards in the bin, right? 
might even get six. Does it get five? No, I, I think you look at four, and it itself counts as one. But this puts three, and then it itself counts as one, so it's actually four, which is kind of good. Um, so I then thought one of the problems I have with my Pauper Dredge deck is that uh, I mill a decent amount of my threats, my Gurmags and my Mandrills, and I only have a Grim Return as a way to recur them. And I was having to include Mortuary Mire and things like that to have, to have otherwise, and I didn't like putting it on the deck because then you can't dredge. So I think this might work. I think this might be the way to continue efficiently dredging uh, while also being able to recur your Gurmags and Mandrills. I think this card might be the key. Because <laughs> I also play red uh, with looting because you can flashback looting. So this card is super cool, I think, uh, and maybe works for us in June. Uh, Falcon Wrath Reaver, I don't see it played. So Guardian Priest, no. I've never seen it in Jules. I don't think it's good enough. Did you guys write down that cheat code, by the way? It's super important. This is a card and a half. This is a card I actually really wanted from this set. So Hanweir Garrison, two and a red for creature human soldier rare. It's a two three and it says whenever Hanweir Garrison attacks, put two one one red human creature tokens onto the battlefield. Tapped and attacking. Yes. So that's aggressive as balls. And, um a three three mana two three that on turn four attacks as a four five, three bodies pretty amazing um if you can protect this in some way or buff it uh that's pretty cool maybe if you want to go all in and white red and use nimbus wings on this because nimbus wings would make this a three five and then it would be a three five flyer so you'd be able to get in each turn and make these tokens really cool Super strong card. Like in terms of what we have available in jewels, this is serious. I don't think people play this enough. I think this is a really, really scary card. So it does have. I know you guys are wanting to see the back of it. If you, this card is not only a flip card. It is a card that melds with another card, and they both go sideways together to make what you're seeing here. And where Garrison is only one half of that image. Um, on its back. So Hamway the Writhing Township, which is a 7-4 legendary creature Eldrazi ooze at rare. Trample and Taste. Says whenever Hamway the Writhing, writhing Township <laughs> writhing, writhing Township attacks, put two three two colorless Eldrazi horror creature tokens onto the battlefield tap and attacking. So you sort of go big on that ability. So this melds with a land that requires you to spend three red red and tap the land to do this so that's six turn six you could do some potentially um i don't know if i would feel it necessary or even uh wise to to play the land so it does have this additional ability to is it i think it gives creatures haste maybe for a red that'd be pretty good if that was what it was <laughs> i may be exaggerating it um, but it does have a thing. Uh, it seems hard to play and it's colorless issue, but if you played mono red, then it wouldn't be an issue. So very, very cool card. Could be a big deal. I've had the Writhing Township kill me a couple times, actually. I remember twice, specifically. Tokens and just going dead. Long Road Home does a flicker, doesn't it? Puts a plus one, plus one counter on things and it's kind of okay. I mean, if you wanted some, some way to protect your creatures, maybe it's alright. Neville Gast, Herald, 2 and a blue for a 2-1 creature spirit, flash flyer, and enters the battlefield, or another spirit enters the battlefield, tap creature. There might be a spirit deck you can, again, I haven't really seen it played against, so imagine that there's been some testing and it's super successful. Halfway decent card. 
Queen of Ember cool is one of the cards you could get back with that dude. But black white strategy where you play an ally is the healer. Waxing Moon, pretty cool just because it flips the mana cost flip werewolves. Yeah, I just uh, I just don't think so. I think Moon Mist maybe put, but not. The Being able to turn three, flip your good cast is pretty badass though. This is a cool card. Definitely sees play in jewels. I know if you guys are sort of magic aficionados, you might not look at this card and go, "That's a played card." This is a played card. This is the standard. So this is good enough. It's docent of perfection. Three blue blue, five four fire. So you can fire might be ready. Uh, it's creature insect horror. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a one one blue human wizard creature token onto the battlefield. If you do, or sorry, then if you control three or more wizards, you transform it. So play this turn five in ideal world. And then it flip it, turn eight nine, uh, and it becomes a six five. So you get a plus one plus one, and it becomes a lord for wizards, a really good lord for wizards. It makes all of your wizards uh, delvers effectively because it gives them makes them three twos with flying. They're incel insectile aberrations at that point. Um, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from this point. Which is actually a 3 2 fly. Um, Markov Crusader, but the issue is it is expensive. It's just no. Markov Crusader uh, looks okay. Like, for a long time I've looked at this and gone, yeah, it seems alright, but just not good enough, unfortunately. Um, Savage Alliance is probably good enough. It's two in a red for an instant with Escalate generic mana. Uh, you choose one or more. Three modes are creature ta creatures target player controls gain tram trample. So you take all you guys trample over the top. Savage Alliance deals two damage to target creatures, so there's some direct removal aspect. Savage Alliance deals one damage to each creature target opponent controls. And that is a powerful um, effect just in and of itself. That is uh, overloaded electricery, which is a two mana spell. So, um, yeah, the fact that it's one sided is quite powerful when it's in red. You know, you're likely yourself to have small dudes, uh, so you don't want to wipe the board. But it, the one sided board wipe plus two damage would let you kill something with three health and wipe all the other dudes. And then you could also. Like, instead of, you could do it on your turn. Kill a bunch of their dudes. Just kill either double blocking with two damage or whatever. You guys trample. And then the one that was goes unblocked after you kill a guy, say. Trample. So, oh, that's cool. Uh, Waxing Moon, we talked about. Stency and Keeper, probably not good. Three, tap a land. Guardian... Come on, Liliana. Good say no to another disintegration. Oh, Mirrorwing Dragon. That's kind of cool, but probably a liability. Mirrorwing Dragon. Three red red for a four or five creature dragon. A mythic flying. Uh, when a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, that uh, the target's only Mirrorwing Dragon. That player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls. But the spell could target each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So, this is definitely, <laughs> it's, it's very good, but there is, is there a liability aspect? I remember spending ages when this first came out, but I never saw play, so you never had to think about it again. So whenever a player, so he casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only, 
that player, so if my opponent did it, they get their that spell, each other creature they control the spell could target. Each copy targets different creatures. So it protects it from removal because if they have a board it kills their board. But if they buff it, buff all their dudes. But you know, buff drag. I think I'm reading right. Yeah, so I can buff my own guys by buffing. Yep, seems fine. Whew, that was, <laughs> that was hard. Um, so sh Shrill Hyler, I think we did talk about. Uh, in the previous video, but two and a green for a three one is great. Werewolf horror. Creatures with power less than it can't block it, and the transform for six is quite good. And it makes it a three five. Creatures with power less than it can't block it. It's combat damage to the player, you get. It's okay. I think it might get into the werewolf decks and jewels just because we don't have enough werewolves. Well, I mean, we kind of do, but... Certain death, just too expensive, I think. It's a Guardian Priest, playable. Maybe there's some sort of really negative blue-white deck you could put it in. Oh, speaking about negative blue-white stuff, this is actually quite a positive blue-white card at the same time as being deeply bummery and negative. Um, Spell Queller is one white-blue for a 2-3 creature spirit flash and flying and then enters the battlefield exile target spell with converted mana cost four or less when spell queller dies exiled cards owner may cast that card without paying its money so if it's a situational card maybe that wouldn't affect the board at that moment which is pretty niche normally it is going to affect the board but if it didn't they wouldn't get to keep the card if they didn't want to cast it. They would have to cast it. Just let it go. So that's kind of relevant occasionally. Um, but basically you counter a spell and temporarily exile it. You sort of delay uh, it happening. But in combination with Selfless Spirit, you can protect your spell queller because you don't want them to get that back. Very, very strong card, regardless. Every blue-white deck I build, most likely. Graph Harvest, almost definitely not good enough. I mean, yeah, just not good enough, I think. Ocarina of Nature, because we don't have sideboards played. Backwood Survivalists, 5 4 Trample for Fur in it. But it's probably not strong enough still. Primal Druid, decent if you want to sacrifice something. Ramp you. Yeah. Okay. Lunark Mantle, I've actually seen played in sort of the white aggro decks that use Nimbus Wings and things like that. This is an alternative. Unless you have to sack a permanent. Just start sacking your lines towards the end of the game if you can get through. Alright, well, we gotta keep opening, unfortunately. Uh, let's go down to twos and hope because I kind of want to maybe get some of the Kaladesh elves as well if we can fit it in. But Liliana is absolute priority number. Dwarf Infiltrator, one the blue, one one creature human horror with Skulk. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, discard a card. Whenever you discard a creature card, you may pay two. If you do, pay two colorless Eldrazi horror creature token on the battlefield. This is kind of cool. There is uh, a f turn five reanimation strategy that is that is feasible in jewels, and this would do it, right? Yeah, this would do it. Uh, the other card that really helps is terrible salvage drone from uh, Battle for Zendikar that was terrible in draft, but that 
is a way to trick your opponent into uh, giving you a discard outlet on turn one or turn two, I guess, because you attack with it or they attack lock with it. But when it dies, you get to loot. If you loot away log, then you're set up for Rise from the Grave on five. So this might go into that strategy. Could be fun. You'd have two of these and salvage drones. I don't know if there are better discard spells now. There probably are. Um, Smoldering Werewolf, two red red for a three, two creature werewolf horror. When it enters the battlefield, you deal damage to each of up to two target creatures. That's pretty good. That will get into your werewolf deck at, at terms of the dual standard, I think. Um, and for four red red, you can transform it into a six four. Don't love that it's four health. Uh, Ever it attacks, it deals two damage to target creature player, which is very good. This would probably make it, I think. Prey upon just uh, removal and green, which we don't know much of, so it's kind of a thing. Bombardment, because it can't hit the player, probably doesn't make it, but is pretty good. Malevolence might get into the black decks I play. Maybe this goes into that aggressive elf deck. Um, the effect is quite minor, but it could be relevant pretty regularly. Liliana. Where's Ristro? Uh, strong card condemned. Black, black for a 2 2 creature vampire horror. Rare. I like this card. Discard a card. Vampires get plus 1 plus 1. Um, yeah. If you're playing vampires, this is probably good enough. Plenty of. And this card's free discard outlet is great. The fact that it pumps them is great. Two mana, two two is pretty good. Really cool card as well, which is nice. It's nice to play cool. As opposed to Prophetic Prison. Uh, Faith Unbroken, three and a white. <clears throat> this is actually pretty good um, in terms of our removal suite that we have available to us in this format. It's still not good enough, I think, but it's interesting. Enchantment Aura. Uh, Enchant creature you control. Faith unbroken enters the battlefield. Exile target creature and opponent controls until Faith leaves the battlefield. Your creature gets plus two plus two. So four mana get plus two plus two on a creature. While that creature remains alive, effectively, you can exile creature. Re enter the battlefield if the creature ever dies. But this is quite good in like aggressive to sort of low mid range kind of shell where you want to buff your flyer and you want to also deal with their threat and its tempo. You know, like it doesn't matter uh, that they could get it back if they kill their dude, your dude, if you kill them before they kill your dude. So this does a lot of those things. It is four mana, but. It's a uh, decent alternative to, well, it's not really. I was going to say it's a decent alter alternative to Suppression Bonds. And again, both of these are cards you could get back with that 2-3 human, 3-2 human even. Um, because Suppression Bonds can hit Planeswalkers, and that's a big deal. Like, Planeswalkers are relevant in Jules. Like, they are a problem. And there aren't many cards to deal with them. That's why I'm playing two Devar and Flames in Jun deck to kill Jaces and to kill Diana. There are decks that are just Planeswalkers, and it's very difficult to interact with them sometimes. So that that's why Suppression Bonds is probably the better choice if you want to pick a four mana aura. Uh, but I think there's an argument for this, and it's kind of interesting. I like it. Subjugator Angel. Interesting, big tempo um, push, maybe good enough, but it doesn't have haste, so you're not getting this as part of the swing, you know. Still, it's kind of good, and if you can flicker it, then obviously very good. Uh, this is one of the, these guys are good for sacrificing. Okay, so we got Bedlam Reveler. 
Bedlam Reveler will probably go in all my rad decks. Which is, that's kind of cool. Uh, it's six red red for three four creature devil horror rare. It says it costs one generic less for each instant and sorcery card in your ring. So that's the six generic up to and including the six generic you could pay for with center sorceries from your graveyard. You don't have to exile them, which is a nice novelty, um, like you would delve, and it is very similar to delve mechanic otherwise. Uh, despite the fact that certain instant sorceries only, uh, but the the red red cost you're always going to have to pay. So at minimum this costs two, but that's two for. Uh, that also has Prius. That's synergistic with those aggressive red decks that play a lot of Titan Strength and that sort of thing. Um, but the kicker is that when it enters the battlefield, you discard your hand and then cards. Normally, when you play this card, you're going to be empty handed. So you discard nothing and you draw three, three fields for potentially two mana. So has Prius and synergistic with the cards you. And maybe able to cast because it costs so little to cast this, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah, good card. Get another stitch wing. Random reason. Nope. I see this card a lot because it's at the top of uh, Clan Team Free in MTG <laughs> alphabetically. We talked about this, we talked about this, we talked about. Any good with uh, Reveler? Another spell queller, that's really cool. Our blue white deck just go way better. Okay, so we're gonna play like reflector mazes and spell quellers. That's cool. Excited. Anyone who plays like standard in real life, I apologize, but I'm gonna read your nightmares of the last year. Uh so spell queller, awesome. We've already talked about it. Great card. I mean, don't forget that it's a flying two, three for three that you can cast at any time. Or this bit, it's still talked about it. This is him to Turok if you have Delirium, but not really. No, don't so probably not good. Gavany Unhallowed, uh, three and a black for a two four creature zombie. Whenever another creature you can dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So it's plus one plus one counter, that's quite kind of good. Uh, the fact that it's only Creatures you control, that's not so good. Uh, the fact that it's a zombie, kind of good. The fact that it costs four mana, not so good. So, probably not good enough. Interesting prospect for a zombie deck where you make tokens because your dudes are going to die. Pretty casually. Uh, displace, you can flicker two things. this different from Ghostly Flicker? Is this the exact same? I think this is literally Ghostly Flicker. I know because Peregrine Dick. Ghostly Flicker. Ah, it's different because um, this... Right, so the, both of them concern things you control only. So that's important. And it says, exile to target artifacts, creatures, and or lands you control that return them. So, that's better. <laughs> that's just strictly better, right? No positive difference. So I guess they decided that the artifacts and lands players instead. But yeah, there you go. Now you know. Knowing it's half the battle. Okay, so I'm not mad at getting Quellers. So let's continue. On Liliana. I really love playing my gem deck. And I really just want to add this one card. Okay, so we got Thalia. That's a good card. Especially going with all our uh, spell Quellers and stuff. Two and a white for 3-2 legendary creature human soldier. So... Remember the legend rule, don't cast two at once. It's first strike, so three par first strikes, really good. And creatures and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped, which is pretty strong tempo-wise, but 
The first strike, something to remember is that you're probably playing uh, the up to tenants, the the two one first strike, nine anthem if you uh, get renown for other creatures. Uh, something like tenant. But either way, if you have that on the board in Thalia, as I've faced earlier today, that's pretty scary because that's five first strike, you know, you just can't interact with that board in combat, so pretty cool. And you do feel the Ender's tapped thing in Thalia as well. Scarlet Barter we talked about. Narwhal Dryad we did. This is a cool card. If you can make Delirium happen, this is pretty good. It's a green... For a 1 1 creature triad, horror, death touch, and a size not that relevant unless you're aggressive. Uh, if it's blocking, it's effectively just survives uh, combat sometimes. Another bombardment, Ironclad Slayer was the two human positioning. Okay, we got the other reveler. So I, I really do think there's like a uh, glitch in Magic Online, or sorry, Magic Jewels, where you tend to get the same rare within a couple of packs of each other, if not consecutively, just because of the way the algorithm works for calculating a what you have when they bring up one you do have. So they probably brought up one I do have, and then they ran the algorithm, searched up the next one in the chain, which is on the that's fine. Um, so I'm happy with that. That makes you know aggressive deck better. We also got another Savage Alliance, but you probably only play one Alliance and then a couple of Defiance, the rare. Another Nebelgast Herald. Maybe we can do the Spirit thing with Spell Quellers. Waxing Moon, not so good. Distemper Blood, not so good. Convolute. Eh. What, how does Convolute compare to... Uh, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a card for us, but might be might be playable. Three mana counter spells are just about playable for Okay, the Lupine prototype is kinda cool if you want to crew one of those like the crew five ten seven or whatever it is. A way to do it if you really want to do that. So unsubstantiate. Now, because you don't draw a card, it's so much worse than Romantic Betrayal. But it does do a thing and might work in this tempo -y spell quality deck I'm thinking of. This is just too expensive for me. Drag under, probably. You get to draw a card, nice. That might be the best return to hand spell we have because of the draw card. Champion of Vengeance, maybe you play it in something where you play that five mana enchantment. But it's just such a small, slow uh, drain. Cast for five mana. How much impact do you really expect this time? Wolfmold Observer, 4 green green for 6-6 six, six creature tree folk. Uh, rare, whenever creature t whenever a creature you control with toughness 4 or greater dies, draw. Eh, probably not good enough. I like it better than other people, I'm sure. I really do, like I've considered. I play, I, I considered putting it, I don't know if I did put it in a commander deck to place a DC, which of reaction targets. Um, okay, one more. Sorry, we didn't get there. Freestro, if you watch this video, man, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> he is uh, a fan. 
Well, we did get a Hamware Battlements to round it off to go with our uh, Garrison. Yeah, so it does do it for one red, but you do have to tap this land as well. So effectively, you're spending two mana to do something haste. Um, and turn six or six, six mana effectively because you have to tap. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, maybe I only play one copy of the land. So Did I get the other copy of uh, Garrison or just the first one? Uh, Haunted Dead's awesome. Three and a black for a 2 2 creature zombie. When Haunted Dead enters the battlefield, put a 1 1 white spirit creature token flying onto the battlefield. You can pay one to black and discard two cards to return it from the graveyard of the battlefield. Tapped. Super powerful in conjunction with uh, Prized Amalgam, for example, but uh, synergizes with quite a few different kind of cards. It's like pseudo lingering souls. Uh, it keep coming back as long as you have cards to discard. It doesn't get exiled at any point. Um, just awesome. It's a way to discard cards if you're really to do that. And it's in the kind of deck this works in. Like, this might be another card that goes in that blue-black reanimation shell where you're trying to reanimate all four. And then you can maybe make it Esper and use that Fabricate or whatever it's called, uh, Kaladesh, where you can reanimate an artifact. So you could have Gear Hulks and Eldrazi and then three animation spells and then Looters, you know, Jace, the uh, Eldrazi and uh, Worf Infiltrator and then you'd have these for discard. There's the deck, go make it, it's class. I think I'm soon. Uh, and nothing else of interest. Weaver Lightning's kind of cool, actually. He has a place somewhere. That's it. Thank you very much for hanging out, guys. Those who've stuck with stuck with us this long, it's been really good having you. Appreciate it. So we'll have a quick summary of cards. Um, and I will. Off camera, make a note of what I'm interested in. Some fiddling. Um, so we got Thalia, that's cool. Got the Docent. Got the Lunark Mantle, which is maybe a thing. Got a, quite a few scabs now, so that's almost. We got the Dark Salvation for the zombie deck. We got more of this reanimation strategy. We got a way to tempo back a bit. Got Haunted Dead for Zombies and Reanimation. Stromkirk Damned for Vampires, which is probably less complete given that most of the good vampires are in shadows. Got Bedlam Revelers, so we can make a strong red deck. Got Bombardment, probably not good enough. Hammer Garrison is amazing. We even tried the Dragon. Got uh, Smoldering Werewolf for the deck, that could be good. For Lightning, which might have a place in some sort of instant sorcery deck. Dryad and Grapple, which have place. Got some good sacrifice fault. Spell Dwellers. That's, I'm so excited about Decimator. So maybe Deci is Decimator a good reanimation? No, because... Well, I mean, he is because he's got haste. But uh, you don't get this because it's a cast trigger. Uh, two mind banders. We got a deep fiend. So we got a pretty good emerge suite here. Got the battlements. That's that, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out for the second Eldritch Moon pack opening here on Free, Free Play Jewels. My name is Chris, and I appreciate you hanging out. If you haven't already, don't don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And up with the comments, you can go over. YouTube channel and subscribe there uh, and get all sorts of videos in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, P.S. I'll probably be back in a bit with some art. Later.